right. Hello, everybody. We are continuing with ES6 today. Uh, we um, uh, made some progress from yesterday. We uh, we just watched a video on strict mode that Manik had shared. Uh, I'm going to put that in the description, but uh, it's just a video from Bo Carnes describing strict mode and um, several things that I had no idea even existed, uh, but uh, that apparently you can do with strict mode that's really cool. But uh, we learned that it is a way to uh, throw the errors uh, that are not just errors in terms of bugs, but just in terms of best practices, best practices for syntax, uh, things that would be advisable, it uh, would throw those as an error to the console instead of it just passing through unnoticed. Um, so that's a neat functionality, and uh, there's even more than I just explained right there, but uh, that's good to know. Um, and apparently it's best practices to use it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've never heard of anybody really using it, so uh, that's kind of funny. But uh, anyhow, we are gonna jump into ES6 again, and we're gonna mutate an array declared with cons today. The const declaration has many use cases in modern JavaScript. Some developers prefer to assign all their variables using const by default unless they know they will need to reassign the value. Only in that case they use let. However, it is impossible to understand that objects, including arrays and functions assigned to a variable using const, are still mutable. Using the const declaration only prevents reassignment of the variable identifier. Yeah, so this is what I was kind of talking about yesterday is that even though you assign it as a const, it's still mutable, it's still able to change. Um, that's what that means. It's not, um, you know, simply because you name it a const or you, you declare it as a const that it would never change. There's um, ways that it can change, but uh, you just can never declare it again. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that's, does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> yeah, so just the word const is, is only about for the, assignment of the variable otherwise it, it has nothing to do with the the object or the array that whether it is being changed or not it's only about the variable assignment yeah so here's a good example it looks like yeah as you can see you can mutate the object five six seven okay so here's our object itself and the variable s will still point to the altered array of five, six, 45. So in the array, the seven was a const within the array, but it changed to 45. So like all arrays, the array element in S are mutable but because const was used, you cannot use the variable identifier s to point to a different array using the assignment operator. So I guess, especially when it comes to arrays, it's just good to be aware that um, simply because you name it a const doesn't mean that this will always be seven. It could still change. Any of the values within the array could change. Um, so I'm probably just gonna play around with that just to see what I can do. Um, okay, so if I've got const and I'll just call it Z equals One, two, three. And then 
So say I want to, what, it, what was it that they did? They pushed? Mm, no, just. What, what did they do? Change one of the value, yeah. Oh, the index by the index, okay. Mm. Okay, so what if I try to change all of the values? Uh, let me get back to my inspect. So, Z, zero equals 100, and Z, one okay. equals 200. Can you put also Z dot push? Z. Uh, second, yeah, I'll do I'll do dot push, but I'll change each of these to a hundred yeah. in their value, and then z um, dot push, and I'll push four hundred. All right. Okay. Now console. So now console. Y, Z, and let's see what it does. Mm. Yeah, so there you go. We have a const and we just changed everything about it. But it's still Z. Yeah. So if I tried to do this, const Z equals 500. Let's see what this does. Excess is an error. Because I've already declared it up here. I can't declare it again. But I can change it, obviously. So, yeah. If that doesn't mess with you. <laughs> yeah, now you are changing the whole, uh, the variable. Yeah. Like you are reassigning. To a new yeah. value, no. No. yeah, that that that's not possible. Yeah, what did what did you want to try, Monique? <clears throat> Feel free to share your screen if you want to. Or um, I found out this neat thing last week. Okay, so I can give. So Monique, you now have the mouse. So you can use the mouse on my computer. Isn't that neat? Yeah. So try to type something. Like try to mess with this const and you, you uh, try, try to um, try to do something like shift. Oh, sh you shift. Like try to shift something off of that. Like Z shift 100, I don't know, some, something. Or the, the zeroth index. I don't know, something. Yeah, that's pretty neat though, huh? Oh, do you use Z again? Um, no, you, you, if you try to use it, it's gonna throw an error like I just had <coughs> happen. So Z is in this console already. It's already been defined. You can, yeah, do, use another variable and then just toy around with it. Yeah, that's a bracket. Sorry if my screen is too small. Yeah, I just made it a little bigger. 
There we go. Is that a little better? All right, so we got an array five, ten, and fifteen. And try to do something that we haven't done to manipulate it. I don't know. It's on anything. Yeah, Just, maybe pop pop. Yeah, you could pop it. You could pop the fifteen. How would you how would you pop fifteen off? All right, so you pop 15 like this, pop 15. Uh, no, you don't have to uh, put a oh, parameter. You pop. just do this and it would just pop it, right? Yeah. yeah. So then. Now console X. Yeah, let me say X. And it's going to do. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it, it popped 15 off. It didn't move, so yeah. Yeah, pop is just a, fun, a functionality of, uh, is a, a method of sorts. It's an array method. Yeah, array method. Yeah, it, uh, it detached 15 from the array. Yeah. So it changed a constant. Yeah, well, if you want to remove the last element of the array, you can use pop. It's like the same thing as a push. You, if you want to add some yeah, elements it's just, to existing array, you can use push. If you want to remove, you use pop, just like yeah. that. Yeah, you would just do that because um, you just needed to change it. Like, like say, I don't know, say you had a group of people and it was, you know, Billy and Jane and, you know, then yeah. you know, Jane was no longer a part of the group. So you just wanted to say uh, group you know, push uh, Steve. And then let's say group pop, um, and then you just Steve stop coming. So then you said, okay, let's take off Steve. And then if you, oh, you're typing. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just. Yeah, there's other reasons. Um, there's shift. I like if I, oh, I've forgotten what shift does. Do I need to declare something for shift? I can't remember. Yeah. So shift would take the first one off. So now if I said group, it's just Jane. Jane's the only one left in the group. Okay. But, She's asking uh, why do we need to use const? <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was to keep variables that don't change. Uh, I think that's a, a misunderstanding about what const is. It's not that it's never going to change. It's um, yeah, it's just that um, you can't declare it again. So I couldn't say um, you know, group equals John now. Like I couldn't declare it as John. It would just throw an error. Yeah. So that's useful in the sense that uh, where, let's do it with var. Var equals group two. And let's say, let's do the same thing that we just did. Uh, Billy and Jane and now let's try to say group 
group two equals, or let's even just say var group two equals John. So I'm not even, it's not even an array anymore. It would allow me to do that. So now group two is no longer, group two is no longer Billy and Jane. I just redefined it with one line of code. But const would never allow you to do that and let would never allow you to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a part of basic JavaScript. Um, yeah. If you have, like we, we've done those in the basic JavaScript section. Mm -hmm. But in ES6, it just carries over those methodologies. Um, so, yeah, toy around with those in your console and just see what they do. Can I drop off the second var? Like, pop it? Yeah, I could pop it and it'd be nothing. It would just be empty, it would just be undefined. Um, uh -huh. What she mean the second bar? She mean the second element? In the... I just said an error. Uh, hmm. What is it saying? Do you have, do you have any, any array with the pop two? Yeah, just toy around with it, see what you can do. Um, this is, uh, Monique is driving, so I'll let her just toy around with it. So we've got apple, apple, orange, and banana. And they're they're not just apples, oranges, and bananas, they're numb. All right. All right, so now what do you want to try to do with that? You can. All right, so she's trying to declare it again. All right, so grapes. All right, so it just declared it as grapes. Yeah, so all that work you had done to create that array is gone. But if you ever assign it as a const or a let, then it would say no bueno, you can't do that. It just creates harder rules. Yeah, you can, that, you can add or remove elements from the array, but you cannot reassign the yeah. num variable yeah. to something else. I mean, just do the same thing that you did with that var. Like, change that to a const and then see what happens if you try to do what you did with grape. Yeah, here's a trick, I'm gonna show you this. I'm just gonna click the up arrow button. If I'm in this and I just click the up arrow button, that gives me my text. I don't have to copy and paste anything. But change that bar to const. And then give a space, yeah, so declare that. Yeah, rename it something so it's not numb anymore. All right, so yeah, enter or yeah, add a semicolon or whatever you want to do. Yeah, it'll recognize it even if you don't, but yeah. 
I guess it's best practices to do it. So then if you try to de declare a tnum as grape, then it won't do it. It won't allow you to do it. It'll just say syntax or uh, type error. Yeah. It's just telling you, don't do that. So yeah, that aspect of it is nice because it, um, especially if you're working in a in a a large code base, say I named tnum like a year ago, um, and I like to use tnum, you know, as my name for something. If I tried to a year later, try to redefine that, it would give me a syntax error and it would say, no, Elliot, you already named it tnum. You can't do that again. Uh, you need to either give it a new variable or um, you need to one by one go through and re rename the index. So, or use var if you or let in a way that you want it to change more. But you cannot you cannot redeclare it. You just have to manipulate it. You'd have to manipulate it specifically. Yeah, this is why they don't recommend var because var there's no rules. It just if you want to change it in one line of code, you can just change it. But const and let they have rules that say only if you specifically change the index of the array can it be changed. Like, I don't even know if it's, if it's not an array um, thing equals, um, um, guy I'm just gonna say guy and then I try to say thing equals um, guy two yeah so even if I try to do that it won't allow me to do that because it's a const but if I say var um, other thing and then I say guy and then I say guy or uh, other thing equals guy two. If I just do the same thing, then it would allow me to do that. Yeah, so same thing with let, let um, another guy, another thing equals guy. And then I say another, I don't even know, I must have misspelled it, <laughs> but it gets the point across, just, just bear with me. Okay, so if I say another, another thing, another thing, thing <laughs> guy too. So let, it would allow you to do that, obviously, because I just did it. But cons, it cannot be reassigned. But let it allows you to do that. That's that's how let is best used for like an index. But if I tried to say let another thing, uh, another thing, thing, I shouldn't have said that that way. And I said guy three, then I don't think it'll allow me to do this. Yeah. But var it would. So if I said var other thing equals guy three, then it would allow me to do that. Yeah. But how long is that video? Do we have time to watch it? Let me see.
19 minutes. Yeah, let's. Okay, fun, fun function. Yeah. I actually have some videos of his that I need to watch. So, yeah, this will just be homework. I'll try to put this in the. Uh, yeah, go to this video, var let and cons. And um, yeah, it never hurts to know as much as you can about this because, as Misfin has said before, and I've heard, I've even been asked this in uh, like mock interview prep. What tell me the difference between var, let, and const? And um, it's a pretty basic question, so I would expect to be able to explain this very well in an interview. Um, you know, at least that you're aware of what they do and that you know you could do something like we just did like in the console you could just say like okay yeah yeah so yeah yeah so maybe tomorrow let's come ready to like everybody just say like what is it that you would say is the difference between uh, var, let, and const, and why you would use them, and whatever else, whatever like cool information you've like dug up. Probably come ready to like talk about it tomorrow. How about that? So yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, actually, before you joined, uh, uh, Mesfin and I, we were, um, I just have to share this with you. Um, actually, CJ sent me a document. She may have sent that to you already. Uh, it's just uh, some cool like uh, questions. Let me see if I still have it up. Uh, I think I just have it in my downloads. Yeah, these practice questions, PDF. Oh, was that, did I share this already? I may have, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think CJ sent this to me actually, but um, let's see if they talk about var and let. Let, let, let. Yeah, you should be able to explain the difference between let and const and let and var. So create a variable with let, so they did that. And this is a Boolean, this is a string, this is a number, create a const. So that's a number, that's a string. I create a variable, yeah. And then, yeah, the variables, you could reassign them, the constants, you could not reassign them, but you could still change them and let you could not necessarily let assign it but you could definitely change it as we just saw in more ways than you can const but um yeah i think the biggest takeaway that i had from my mock interview was that um a constant it's a misnomer to say that it can't change because it will, it, it's mutable, it's changeable, but it's, uh, it's read only. I think that's the, the best, the best way I can describe it is that it's read only and, but it's still changeable, even though <laughs> constant, you just think like, okay, that's not supposed to change, but, um, that's a little bit misleading because it's changeable. Um, but yeah, so look over this and 
watch as many things as you want. Can I see this screen again where you changed it? Uh, yeah, the console log. Let me see if I can find it. I've got so many things open. I think it was here. Yeah. Oh, my console. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, where was it? It was up here. Yeah, so the const x is uh, is a is obviously it's a constant, and it's got three um, items in the in the array, but we popped off fifteen, and then it just became two items instead of three. So the constant x was changed from five to ten. And if we even look at the one that's above here, this is constant Z. And I, it was one, two, three. But I changed everything about it by index, by the bracket notation index. And I pushed 400 to it. So everything about that, very, the constant was changed. Not a single thing stayed the same. So it can be done, but you have to specifically change it and you cannot declare it again as a constant. I guess you could, I mean, people will say, you know, it's manipulated, I would say that, yeah. Altered, manipulated. But at the end of the day, it is changed or altered or manipulated. Some like Z123 is no longer Z123. It's Z100, 200, 300, 400. So the values itself within the array are no longer the same, but the, the bucket of Z, the container Z is still the same. No, you can't do that. Yeah, so let's see what it says if you say that. If you do const z pickles. I think you still have control, yeah. Yeah, toy around with it. See, see how, if you can break it. Yeah, so it's gonna say, no, you can't do that. Identifier Z has already been declared. And that's where the, the syntax error, the type errors, like they give you good hints of like, okay, don't you know ES6? This is, this is not okay in ES6. Yeah, so if you try to change Change this, it's gonna say no bueno. All right, Messman, do you have to go take your son? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just try to finish this challenge today, so. Um, but if you come back in time, we'll be here. Okay. Does that help, Monique? Yeah, I feel like just doing this really helped me. So, yeah, you just got to kind of work with it and just figure out what you can and can't do. Okay. Yeah, what what uh what's your question?
Okay. So you got a slow page. Okay. I'm probably not the best person to ask, but uh yeah, I don't I don't I've never heard of modernizer. Um but uh maybe after class we could we could look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really not sure how much help I could really be, but um I I could I could give it a look. Yeah. If I can help you, and I definitely know somebody that could, but um, or she would at least like steer you in the right direction. But yeah, all right. Let's get back to finishing this one. Okay, all right. So we've seen that you can manipulate the constant. And, and we even changed everything about our array. They just changed the 7 to 45. An array is declared as const s equals 5, 7, 2. Change the array to 2, 5, 7 using various element assignment. All right, so Monique, I'm going to give you the wheel. Can you change this to the value that they want. So instead of 572, it should be 257. It's already been declared. FYI, it's just, it's already been declared. Yeah. All right, notice what the error is saying down there. And then it's saying this is invalid in the comments as well. So there's a syntax error. How would you how would you uh, access something by the index? How would you uh, access the zeroth index of S? If I wanted to access the zeroth index of S, then I would want to say S, open bracket, close bracket. And I would want to say, yeah. So that would be the second index. So then I would want to say, seven instead of two. The third would actually, what would the third index be? 
If two would be the second index, yeah, because it starts from zero. Yeah, so assign the array value that it should be. Okay. Now comment out line five or uh, delete it. Yeah. So console, console s now. Oh, it's actually. Uh, yeah, you've already got this. The second index of s is already already two. What did they want you to change it to? Instead of two, it should be what? Look at look at line six. Yeah, there you go. So now, if you console log s, what's it going to say? Yeah. So you just changed it from two to seven. So then you just need to do that for the zeroth and the first index, the oneth index of S. Yeah. And they have the values there on line five and, and six that you need to change it to. All right, <laughs> so now you can pass this. Yeah. All right, here, let me uh, swipe this code real quick. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, you just have to invite pain on yourself to become better at this. <laughs> I totally understand. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I would just say if you have time, go back and watch the videos that we've done for basic JavaScript or just go through those lessons on your own. Um, I'm probably not going to go back through them again anytime soon, but uh, yeah, yeah, then yeah, just finish CSS and then once you're done with the uh, CSS part, it, it would it would probably be really helpful for you to go through the basics of JavaScript again. Um, but I think there's some other people here that would be willing to do it with you too on Adobe uh, 3 Develop, so. If you're watching this and you're on YouTube and you need a study buddy in JavaScript or CSS, you know, Monique could use a study buddy. But uh, yeah, like I said, if you've not gotten through CSS or JavaScript, then go to our channel. We have lots of videos of people going through it. Yeah, <laughs> switch to code on Twitter. She will gladly talk with you at least on Twitter. But uh, 
All right, so let me save this and then let's see what it does in our, I need to get my live server to work. It's not been working. Uh, I need to disable it and then, yeah, it's not even enabled. Let me do my live server. Yeah, it's like disabled. Enable to the workspace. Okay, so let's see what it does now. Okay. And let's say, um, Okay, so I just did that, and then let's come over here. Mm. Just have a little button here. My live server. It's not working. Reload. Okay. Hey, where's my live server? Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. Ah, okay, finally. All right, now. Wait a minute. Let's make the right thing. All right, yeah. So here we are. And if I edit my console, there it is. And it says array three. And let's go back to my code. Did I put that in the right place? Yeah. Okay, let me get out of that one. This one, back to this one, yeah. I want to console log S. You just grab the code snippet. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, put it into yours. Um, uh, put it into your uh, code editor if you need to. I think you reposition some stuff. I'm going to do control Z. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you did. I don't know what that update is. Yeah, did you copy it? Were you able to get the code when it it won't let you copy it. Okay. Now let's do this. This is like not going to be very pretty, but at least it's there for you. And I'll just take you off remote so that way you can use your mouse and it won't conflict. Okay. Aren't you with, you were with us yesterday though, weren't you? In ES6? Yeah, we're, we're at the same place, I think. 
I, I'm not uh, that far ahead. If uh, if you did everything with us yesterday, yeah, yeah. Like I think this is one sec. Yeah, we're just we're just on number four. Oh, uh, the computer. Okay. Well, which one are you on? I can just jump to the one that you're on. And we can look at it together. I can just let you do it. I can just let you share your screen if you want. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Just go to the one that you're on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just if you have a question, then then uh, feel free to stop us, but uh, and ask in the chat. But I'll let you just do your thing. And if you want me to read it out, I can. Just uh, point your mouse where uh, where you're reading. All right. So we got number ray. And in this example, they use var instead of instead of let. With the var keyword, i is declared globally. So when i plus plus is executed, it updates the global variable. So i is a global variable. This code is similar to the following. In the next one, they have num array. It is declared as a variable. Specifically, it's declared as a variable, but as we saw in the other, the other discussion we had, that if you just declare a variable, it's pretty much like saying var by default. This behavior will cause problems. If you were to create a function, and store it for later use inside a for loop that uses the i variable. This is because the stored function will always refer to the value of the updated global i variable. All right, so it's a global variable. All right, and then as you can see, print num2, the function are the yeah, the yeah, it's a variable print num two. It prints three and not two. So in this situation, because I didn't um, um, wasn't assigned specifically by a const or a let, it uh, it changed. It was replaced by three because it goes all the way up to three. Less than or less than three. And then it just, uh, it adds, it increments the one, even if uh, it stops at, it's supposed to stop at two. When it says if I is strictly equal to two, then it's saying print the function and return i, but uh, because it's a variable, it just goes straight on to, to three because you said to increment it in the for loop. That i++, plus plus, it, it executes regard, regardless of being told that it should print at, that it should return i at two. It uh, it still executes the I plus plus to return it as three instead of two. All right, so this is because the value assigned to I was updated, and the print num two function returns the global I and not the value I had. So it's a global I and not the value I had when the function was created in the for loop. The let keyword does not follow this behavior. So then there's an example of let 
So we can see for let i equal zero. So because you just use that three letter word let, it told the ver the 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 let keyword makes it such that it doesn't. Yeah, like let me let me change you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let i equal zero. But if you say if i is equal strictly equal to two, then return i at two. And I haven't given you permission to go to three would basically be how you could interpret that. So if you console log, uh, or even the fact that it's, it becomes block scoped is no longer global, global scoped. So a variable is a variable across all of the code base. But let is only going to be returning i within the scope of the for loop. So because the console log is outside, the console log i is outside of the for loop, it's as if you didn't define it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, which in this, in this example, they have that, they have a block scope of i, and then they have a function scope of i. And in this example, they're gonna show you how one doesn't equal the other, even though they're both i, but one is not gonna equal the other because of one change that you make. All right, so I is not defined. Okay, so I'm looking at the example again over here in the use strict. I is not defined because it was not declared in the global scope. It is only declared within the for loop statement, print num two, return the correct value because three different I variables with unique values zero, one, and two were created by the let keyword within the loop statement. Fix the code so that I declared in the if statement is a separate variable than I declared in the first line of the function. Be certain not to use the var keyword anywhere in your code. All right, so one is function scoped and the other is block scoped. And you don't have, yeah, there's no var there. So if you run the code, it's gonna console log those things so that you can strictly see what it's doing. Yeah, I think it's wanting you to say something. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, you may have to reset the code. I would just reset it and then change the var to let and then yeah run it I wouldn't change that I'll just run it now yeah uh, I 
Uh, I think I think you have to say no, no, no. Leave that. And then I would say, yeah. Read the. It says fix the code so that I declared in the if statement is a separate variable. So the I in the if statement, it needs a particular keyword before it. The I in the if statement. It's fine as it is there, but it needs something before it. Like you said, let I equal within the line six. Yeah, you can type that in line six, yeah. So in line six, what, what should you say? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Now try it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you understand what was going on with that there? It, I think it went to the next one. We can go back if you need to there. That's CSS, right? Yeah. Just scroll down. Yeah, so in this situation, it's still var. I'm guessing you're just trying to create something, just like a, a little playground. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to create another line, um, you have to use the shift enter in the console. So you can click the up arrow, up arrow, yeah, and then arrow around, and then add a add a um, uh, open paren before uh, before the other paren. Use your arrows, yeah. Add a paren, and then go to the end of the line, and then shift enter, yeah. There you go, and then. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we've got a name, Henry.
it's uh yeah i think the um yeah I, I don't think you you didn't use a um, curly brace to end it so yeah use the up arrow to get to that that code and then yeah, use it again yeah and then um yeah you need to you need to add two curly braces to close out Yeah, so shift enter curly brace and then shift enter again and then another curly brace. So you got two open curly braces. And then um Okay, so this one would allow you to change it because it's a var, but if you set it up as a lead, I don't know. I don't know what it would do, but we'll see what it does. So, yeah. Invalid or unexpected character. Okay, so that, that means there was something to do with the character. Uh, it says in line five. So count your lines one, two, three, four, five. So there's an unexpected character. I think it has to do with. Uh, oh, it's because, yeah. Okay, so the character, yeah, it has to be. Yeah, so run it now, see what it says. If it gives you, it throws you an error. Okay. Yeah, tell it to return something in the if statement or outside. Yeah, it's illegal because it's not inside of the uh, the for the the if or the function. So it's block scoped because you you set it as a let. So again, it doesn't have permission. It doesn't have permission to access that block because it's not in the block. But if it's in the block, if it's in the block, then it can return it. So if you try to return it there, return name. Let's see what it does. It didn't do anything. Oh, you got to call it. Call the function first name. In uh, your next line, just call first name with a with an empty block. An an empty paren. Call call your function. First name. Yeah. Yeah, you had it. That was it. Call it. Yeah. But you got to use parens though. Yeah. So see how it's giving you Washington already. It's it's anticipating that you're going to click enter. Yeah. So because it was true, it returned Washington. Because you said it as Henry and then that's true. So it changed it to Washington. So if that's false, yeah. But uh, it won't do anything. It'll just keep it as Henry, but yeah. Click it, uh, yeah, and then call the click the up arrow to first name. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's actually undefined, so it didn't didn't do anything.
even though you let the name be Henry. So if you say var, yeah, let's see what it does. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you call the function in that fun, in the function itself? Yeah, that says undefined still. So. That's interesting. Return name, name equals. Uh, I wonder if um, yeah, name is not a function. Yeah, just type name, see what it does. See what it outputs for name. without the parens, because it's not a function. That's what your type, yeah. You just gotta read the type errors. It says not name is not a function, so you can't use parens. Yeah, now uh, see what it does if you do that. It just says it's empty. There's nothing. Because it was false, okay. I, I get that, yeah. Well, I don't really get that, but <laughs> I don't know why I changed it. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. This is JavaScript. It's just weird. <laughs> uh, I'm noticing that the name in the var is blue, and then the name in the if statement is white so i don't know if that has something to do with it i don't know i'm not entirely sure what's going on there let yeah. Still an empty string. Uh, add in the if statement, add let name there within. Yeah, yeah, you've already got name there. Just say let name within the if, if false and then within the brackets say let name yeah see what it does yeah so see how it did that but even name it's not returning anything that's so weird returning name doesn't do anything uh I think it has to do with the fact that it's white though. For some reason it's still white. Like um you, you notice how the return name is white. I don't know why that is. Yeah, try to try to rename it and uh, I'm not sure why it's still white. Yeah. So return name, just delete that and re retype name maybe. Return name. Yeah, that's so weird. I don't know why it's not turning blue. And I don't know if that's even relevant, um, but if it's false, return name. If it's false,
Well, I think the fact is that it's not false because this is a truthy and a falsy thing. Henry is true simply because it's a string. And there's no default. But it should still run Henry then. Yeah, console log it, see what that does. It won't, it won't return Henry because Henry's not a, a variable or a let. It would have to be name. Yeah, type in name. Yeah, see what that does. And then inv invoke your a function. Call first name. Yeah, there you go. Undefined. That is such a weird thing. I don't know what it's doing. Call name, yeah, see what that does again. That is so weird. I have no idea why it's calling a blank string, an empty string. How? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. God, JavaScript is so weird. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what it's doing. That is so weird. What is it doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think it has to do with the strict, but maybe, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think it has to do with it. I think it has to do with your if statement. Set that to true, if true. Yeah, I think it has to do with the fact that there's nothing. It's not, it's not, it's not false, so it doesn't do anything. What? Oh boy, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Um, I don't, I don't know what it's doing. I think it has, it must have to do with, No, I think, hold on, go back to, um, um, yeah, go back to your function. And then um, there's a space between the if and the paren. Well, no, that's not it. That should work. Let I console I. Hmm. I mean, you're not doing anything that they're not doing. If and let. Wow. Well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Uh, hold on. Call the call the function one more time. 
And then here, I'm gonna use my mouse. I don't know, I can't, cause I don't have permissions. But uh, I think you have to go to the little, um, there should be like a, a hovering menu and then you have to request permissions or something like that. I don't have that on my screen though. Uh, if uh, you can continue to share your screen, there, there's just, uh, there's a remote control on the, um, there should be like a little hovering menu for you that says where your shared screen, your little, there's like a little green button. Yeah, so now I can control, yeah. Okay, good deal. Okay, so if I do that, and then let me see. So there's a function, it's got that. It says use strict. Okay, so let's use strict. Let's say, it, oh, I didn't do that right. Let's do this. And I'm gonna do this. Strict. And okay, so it's a let. Okay, so let name equal Henry. If true, let name equal let name equal Jackson. Console log name. I really don't know why this is not working. Okay, so. Okay. So. First, let's invoke it. Yeah, I see that. I see that. One sec. Let me uh, let me invoke the function. Okay. It's still saying undefined. That's so crazy. Okay, let me get this code snippet. And let's do this one. And then. Uh, it's not letting me do that, is it? Copy and then paste. Okay. Can you copy and paste that and put that in there? For some reason, it's not giving me that function. Okay, Nora, here we are. Yeah. So change the uh, var to let inside the, or the, yeah, yeah. Let, and then use let inside the if statement. Yeah, and then, yeah, I'll run that. It didn't do anything again. So it's not just us. It's even doing that to free code count. What on earth? That is weird. Yeah, so they're they're telling it to console log and it's not like console logging. 
what is this 162 over here on the far right? You see that? What, look, click on that. Click on the 162. Yeah, click on it. Let's see what, what the 162 is. Oh, 162 errors. Does it do anything when you click on that? Mm, no, it didn't do anything. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see. There's obviously some errors and it's not doing something. It's not, uh, it's not showing us those errors. I guess it's been showing us theirs the whole time, but JavaScript, you have stumped us today. I don't know. Let me just let me just see something real quick. Sorry. Let me just see something. Okay, console log. Hello. Okay, I think it's just a problem with console log. Let's, uh, let me see something. Let me see this, let me clear. Okay, and then console log. Uh, Why is it not doing anything? Let me open a new window, sorry. I'm like messing with your thing. What were you saying, sorry? You were, I was using the, yeah, sorry. I was using the go ahead. Okay, let me see if I can. Let's inspect. Okay, so we got a new console on the thing. There's a new tab. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on. Console settings. Preserve the log. Okay, let's go back to the console log and then let's say Um, how do I get this to go away? Okay, let me just console it. Wow, really? I just don't know what's going on. That is crazy. Y equals, let's say, bar y x equals one y equals. 
equals three. And let's say X plus Y. Yep. Uh, let's say okay. sum equals x plus y, and then let's say return sum in the statement. Okay, let's say console. Some sum is not defined. It is defined. Ah, oh, I didn't declare it as a variable. I let let's say now console log sum. Unbelievable. I don't know what it's doing. I'm not sure. Something mysterious. I don't know. JavaScript. JavaScript, do you have stumped us? Any ideas on your end? None. <laughs> uh, yeah, it must be it must be this console. Um, it's not responding. Yeah, yeah, I think. Let me, uh, I mean, because, yeah, it was working on my end, so I don't know. Maybe there's something that I'm not aware of. I don't know. That's not normal. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, hmm. I haven't seen that one. Usually when you console log, it at least displays something. It doesn't just ignore you. Um, so I don't know. But did you want to try to do the next one? Or had you caught up? I think for this one, you just had to say let in the if, and then it moves on. Yeah. Uh, var should not exist. Yeah. All right, so declare a read-only variable with the const keyword. Let is not the only way, only new way to declare variables. In ES6, you can also declare variables using the const. Const has the awesome feature that let, has all the awesome features that let has with the added bonus that variables declared using const are read-only. They are constant value. They are constant value, which means that once a variable is assigned with const, it cannot be reassigned. So there is fave pet and it equals cats and fave pet cannot return dogs because it is already defined as cats. As you can see, trying to reassign a variable with const will throw an error you should always name var variables you don't want to reassign using the const keyword. This helps you helps when you accidentally attempt to reassign a variable that is meant to stay constant. A common practice when naming constants is to use all uppercase letters 
with words separated by an underscore. Change the code so that all variables are declared using let or const. Use let when you want to want the variable to change and const when you want the variable to remain constant. Also rename variables declared with const to conform to common practices, meaning constants should be in all caps. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Boom, there you go, you got it. Okay, now I think you're up with us. Did you do this one already or maybe not? Yeah, you did this one on my browser, but I can just give you the, you can just get the, um, the code from the, uh, the chat, you already did this one. Or, yeah, feel free to do it again, that's fine. Yeah, you, you won't do it that way, though. I'm just going to flat out tell you. Remember, you've got to access it by the bracket notation index. So the zeroth and the first and the oneth and the second. Yeah. Yeah, the index begins at zero, so. I'm curious if you can do more than one, but maybe not. But I know that way it works. We need to clear them one by one. Boom, got it. Yeah, okay. I think we can stop there for the day. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, good work. Did you like um, working in the console and sharing your screen? And do you feel like that helped you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just a code newbie helping other code newbies, so. Yeah, I mean, it's not about me. So, it, like, seriously, anytime you have a question and you're not getting it, 
I would rather you share your screen and engage the learning through active learning. That's the whole purpose of our group is that, yeah, yeah. If you're not getting it, then there's no point to continue in my mind. If anyone in, in the study group is not getting it, then we're just spinning our wheels if, no, if, if someone's not getting it. So I would rather stop right then, we figure it out. If we, and we may not figure it all out, like today. <laughs> we really tried to figure it out, but you know what? Sometimes JavaScript just does some weird stuff. And we just have to say, that's okay. Uh, I, I was reading in uh, another book, it was telling me uh, that this is called code sophistication. <laughs> or uh, maybe, maybe I'm not saying that right. But uh, we have a degree of Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've uh, I actually got that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can you can access that for free, yeah. Um I've actually read a little bit of that one. But I was talking about um there's a Ruby on Rails book uh that I've been reading. And I could actually share my screen. Let me uh you may have to stop sharing so that I can share. Yeah, let me uh, let me share. I'll send you a link to this. If you want to learn Ruby on Rails, I'm currently learning it this way. It's uh, it's this book by a guy named Hartle. It's H A R T L. But uh, yeah, this is the name of the book by Michael, Michael Hartle, Ruby on Rails tutorial. Um, you could just Google this and it would pop up. Um, I have it bookmarked here. The Ruby on Rail, the Rails tutorial.org book. You could go to Rails tutorial.org and you could get there. Um, I'll just pop it in the chat. If you're ever interested in learning this, uh, uh, yeah. You've heard of it. Um, but he talks about uh, code sophistication. I was reading about this in the book, uh, technical sophistication. But uh, he's saying, yeah. So yeah, basically, whenever you reach something that's kind of hard, is basically what he's saying is that uh, that which developed the theme of technical sophistication, the combination of hard and soft skills that make it seem like you can magically solve any technical problem. So yeah, I think it just takes, um, what it takes is you have to actively engage either the console or you know your editor or Google searching or whatever. Like if you're coming across an error, then um, yeah, he's saying you also have to know how to click around menu items to learn the capabilities of a particular application, how to clarify a confusing error message by Googling it, or when to give up and just reboot the darn thing. So maybe we hit that point of give up and reboot the darn thing <laughs> with our console log. So yeah, he was just saying, uh, as you proceed through this tutorial, in all likelihood, you will occasionally be tripped up by things not immediately working as expected, like our console log. 
Although some particularly tricky steps are explicitly highlighted in the text, it is impossible to anticipate all the things that can go wrong. I recommend you embrace these inevitable stumbling blocks as opportunities to, to work on improving your technical sophistication, or as we say in, in geek speak, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So probably the console log is not a bug, it's a feature. So uh, I was reading that though. All right. Yeah, let's let's end it for the day. But uh, I uh, I appreciate you joining us again today. Yeah, Mark Hartle. Uh, he he writes really well. So I, I and this book is entirely free. Just like uh, I think I've got. Yeah, I actually have e eloquent JavaScript right here too. So sometimes I reference it. But yeah, the biggest thing I do, I don't know if I showed you this, but whenever I need a question answered in JavaScript, I just do mdn.io and then I tab. And then it automatically allows me to search the MDN web docs from a tab on the address bar in Google. So now I can search for console log MDN data. Yeah, once you go to MDN once, then you can just tab it. And then it gave me console log. So now I can read all about console log. And yeah, I would just say, you know, be descriptive in what you're looking for, probably, you know, to get to exactly what you want. And you may have to like, you know, sometimes it's not as good. Sometimes you just have to Google it. But if I'm gonna go to MDN anyway, which most of the time for JavaScript questions, um, you're gonna wanna go to MDN because the guy who created JavaScript actually, you know, either wrote or, you know, the people who work on JavaScript, they, contributed to the MDN docs. So, um, yeah, and I, I just know that developers depend on it like as a great resource. So I'm sure you know all this, but uh, anyway, I'll let you go. Oh, no, no, I would never go to human resources. I would actually, whenever you come to human resources, try to go around them. <laughs> <laughs> I always recommend just going to your mentors, your meetups, uh, people in the companies, go to LinkedIn, network with people that are in those companies. Um, never go to human resources first. That should always be a, um, once you've gotten a referral, then you can go to human resources and follow whatever steps. But, I never want to be the first person to contact human resources. I always want someone within the company itself to contact human resources for me. So in fact, that company, I never contacted human resources to this day. I've only just spoken with a uh, front end engineer and um, the CTO and they just said, Hey, come hang out with us. And I'm their friend. So, yeah. You, I mean, I'm planning to get all my stuff together. Like that's what I'm working on right now is like portfolio and resume. And then I'm learning enough Ruby so that, um, the moment I do get the chance to interview or whatever officially, then I'll be prepared. But I'm taking my time because I want to, I want to do a good job and like, I want them to know me, like everybody in the company, I want them to know me. So that before I even get the interview, they just say like, Hey, like we want you on our team you should apply. 
we like you, you know, those kind of things. Most of the jobs in this industry, you get a job by referral. You don't get a job by an application screening. And that's, that's, that's the trick that a lot of people don't really know from what I've heard, you know, and I've, I've, I've actually seen that in, in play. Like I had a project and I recruited, you know, some people within W3 develops. And then I realized that I didn't want to work with people. I didn't know at all. Like they were just total unknown. It was an enigma. I only wanted to work with people that I already knew that I met through W3 develops because I knew that one, they were going to show up to, that I like their personality and that I could work with them. But unknown people, they could have the greatest resume in the world, but if I don't know that they're gonna show up and I don't know that I can trust them, then I don't know that I really wanna work with them. And it's the same way with these companies, like anybody, they wanna work with you because they know you. But anyhow, I'll let you go and we'll stop recording. But um, if you've stuck around this long, uh, kudos to you on the recording. But um, yeah, please connect with us um, on, w, on w3develops.org and come to our Discord. Uh, you should be able to find the community link at the top and drill down into the chat. I've also got in the description, there's a link to our discord. Uh, you know, click on that. You, you can immediately join the conversation and be a part of what we're doing. And uh, we'd love to have more and more people come join us and study with us. Um, so yeah, come, come find us. But uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.